Gadget UK here again. Um, yeah, another pickups video. It's almost like Christmas Day this morning. Um, as you can see, I've got quite a few uh, bits and pieces um, arrived. First of all, I've got these. Uh, what the hell is that? Can you see what it is now? I think that's one of the chips I ordered. A 74 LS00, I think. Uh, 74 LS74. Those are for the ST. Uh, and then I also got some 74HC00. I already had some 74HC74s, so I wanted like so a couple of LS and um, HCs of each of those different types of uh, chip there. But basically, those uh, chips are for the um, 68,000, uh, you know, the 16 megahertz mod for the Atari ST FM. Also got these sockets. Um, I got one for each of the chips I've got, even one for the shrink dip, the shrink um, dip 64. Um, some. Double throw um, switches because um, I, I normally keep these and I've got a load of these in stock, but uh, I've used that many. I've been sticking them on Amigas and STs and things in Dreamcast, so I've like pretty much run out. The other thing that arrived today, I was quite uh, pleasantly surprised, is the uh, Neo Geo CD controller from Japan. Um, that's not bad actually from Japan, it only took about six days. Um, nice quick effect there on the little micro switches, hopefully. Continuity will be okay on those and won't need to do any work on that really. Um, and then you've just got normal sort of carbon based type buttons there. But uh, I'm surprised at the size of that, but that's great. I did one of the reasons I ordered this rather than one of the um, you know the proper sticks to start with is it's just small, it's compact, it's easy to fit in the hand. Um, but I will ultimately get one of the full sort of arcade sticks with the big buttons and things on there, you know, it's all fully micro switched. Um, some more bits here for the ST. Um, well, the ST and the Mega Drive, so they've got a 10 meg crystal oscillator there for the Mega Drive. So I can put that on a little PCB, put a switch in there, and um, have it sort of configurable, you know, so I can overclock it effectively just to make um, games run a bit smoother. You know, the classic example I've seen on um, YouTube is Sega, what's it called, um, Sonic the Hedgehog, where you know you sort of hit, you've got a load of coins and you hit an enemy or something, and all the coins shoot out, and it's just like that little bit slow, you know, it slows down a little bit as. It's trying to animate so many sprites and things all at once. Well, when you've got a 10 meg crystal in there, that doesn't happen. Um, and then the 16 meg crystal here, which is required for the ST. In the previous uh, one of the previous up, um, pickup videos I did, I had mentioned that the um, 16 megahertz upgrade for the um, ST didn't. I didn't think it required a crystal, but it does. Um, it makes perfect sense now. I think about it because if you were to try and divide the existing clock and make um, effectively a 16 megahertz crystal from that using Flip flops or something, you would um, there would obviously be an inherent um, delay with that of you know however many microseconds or whatever, and of course that's going to cause you problems on boot. So um, you want everything synchronised right from the start. So you've got to do it at the the, the, the the origin, I guess, which is why that 16 megahertz clock's required, and then I guess all the other signals are, are derived from that. Um, a few other bits here. I got some uh, KNR, I call it KNR, KNR wire. Um, just because I've run out of that, that's quite useful for patching boards. And recently fixed a few Amigas, and I was getting a bit short of that. I've only got like a, a few inches of that left, so that's to replace that. <coughs> a piece of heat shrink here. Who wondering what the hell that is? <laughs> um, I actually got a full pack of it, but this is just a piece I've taken out of the multi pack, um, and it's required for this, which was something I picked up uh, about a month ago now. Um, it's a Jest. Um, that's a J E S T. Um, which I believe is sort of um, the, the acronym, if you like, for joystick uh, little emulator for ST. Which, as you can see, that's got a PS2. Well, it's a PS1. I thought I'm not, not really sure actually whether it's a PS1 or PS2. Uh, both. I think they're effectively the same thing. Um, I mean, I had a few controllers from eBay. This is one that arrived today. Um, I've already tested this, and it's exactly the same as the other ones I already had. Um, I'll come, which I'll, I'll come back to in a minute, but. The point I'm trying to make is this is a, was described as a PS1 controller. I'm pretty sure it's not. I'm pretty sure it's a PS2 controller. It's DualShock. Um, it's got the two, um, you know, it's got the analog button there and stuff. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it is the older generation um, PS1 slash PS2. Um, and I think from what I understand, they're interchangeable. I think, you know, if this requires um, a PS1 joystick, I think a PS2 joystick will work as well. But I've now got three of these, and, and you know, some of them claim to PS1, some of them claim to PS2. I've had them all apart and you know, cleaned them all up and everything anyway, and they're all exactly the same. The internals are just pretty much identical, and it's like there's two different revisions of PCB I've got. 
um, you know, they're assembled slightly differently, but effectively they give out exactly the same um, inputs and outputs on that cable. So um, I can rule the cable, the, the, the controllers out. But the reason I, I kept purchasing different controllers for this, when you connect this up to the ST, um, what happens is if you switch it into analog mode and use the mouse, that's great. The, the, what you do is you move the thumbstick and the cursor moves around the screen, that's all fine, the buttons work great. As soon as you switch analog off, then obviously it switches to the D pad. And the way that Alison Shellis um, designed this was that when it was in the um, digital mode, you know, the D pad, that you could use that as the joystick. Um, but what happens is, you know, this does work. If you go left, obviously it moves, the, you know, left as so you would on the deep on the joystick on the ST. Um, up, down, right, fine. All the directions work. The buttons, the button works as fire. That's fine. But if you just don't press anything for a second, it starts moving on its own, like sort of toggling between down and left or something, which leads you to start thinking, okay, it's the controller, you know. Um, or maybe it's the, the way this thing's configured because using the key sequences, I think you press like select and or you hold select and you can press different sequences and things that are all sort of documented in her instruction manual, which allow you to switch this so that the, 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 the D port here is configurable, you know, it's compatible with an Amiga or an ST or an Atari or a whatever. You know, there's a whole range of systems that this supports. Um, so I've only got as far as trying on the ST and noticing this problem with the D pad. Um, and this is the reason why I went and bought another one of these because I kept you know, going through controllers like they're going out of fashion going, oh, it must be the controllers, it must be the controllers it isn't the controllers, I think what's happened is I've got a very early prototype this was actually given to me by a very generous um, chap on um, Atari Age uh, forums um, <coughs> I just happened to post um, a comment on it, it was, um, I think it was a remembrance thread about Alison Shallis um, who died, I think it was, was it uh, April 28th, 2011 um, anyway, and this the chap saw this post and said, you know, this is a great thread, and I, you know, we got to talking about Alison. I said, look, if anyone's got um, a Pest, which was the um, PS2 mouse adapter for the ST, um, or, or a Jest, you know, please let me know, I'll buy one, because I'm desperate to get hold of one of these, just to, on a sentiment sort of point of view, really. I didn't really need one, um, but um, I, I got a lot of respect um, for Alison, and, um, you know, I just wanted one of these, just to, you know, like I say, it's sentimental sort of reasons, really. And this guy turned around and said, look, said, when I, I purchased um, some stuff from Alison, Few years back, um, I think he did. A re she did repair or some fun. She threw this in um, for free, along with a pest. And he's always used the pest. Obviously, he didn't want to part with that because uh, he uses that quite a lot. But um, the jest, he just does not need and didn't really know what how to use it, etc. So he's like, oh, I'll send it to you, you know. Which uh, you know, I've, I've got to take my hat off and say thank you very much for for that. I was very generous. Um, didn't even have to pay the postage, which was was really good of him. Um, so anyway, long story short, like I say, that, that's not quite working, but I mean, I'm happy with it anyway. Um, but as part of this, and I, I hummed and hard about this, I, I needed to check this PCB out just to make sure that, it, that the wires were soldered on there correctly. Um, it's almost a bit, I felt it was almost a bit sacrilege taking the, the, the PVC heat shrinking off that, because it had a piece of this on there, sort of snugly, you know, sort of slit. It's, obviously I'll have to take the cable off to, re, to redo this, but slid up um, you know right over the end of the d-type there and it's like it's kind of like that um, I had to cut that off unfortunately um, which I felt a bit sad about but it's the only way I could check to see whether there was anything wrong with the PCB and this is a microchip um, microcontroller there that's Allison programmed um, it's like I say I, I, I'm, I'm torn between is this a prototype that yeah the analog bit works but the d-pad's just a bit glitchy is it the port on my ST? I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reassemble, I'm going to take that off there, reheat shrink that, and I'll give that a blast on an Amiga. Just to rule out my ST, because it could well be something, some glitch on my STFM port um, that's causing that. And some 4K7 resistors there for the um, ST um, memory, uh, sorry, and ST CPU upgrade as well. Um, I only need one. <laughs> I've got a pack of 100 there. It's like a pound for 100, that's not bad. Also got these as well. Um, I've got one of these um, already in my main Amiga 1200. That is the quality. Of that is absolutely shocking. If you're going to buy these off eBay, I'd seriously look around. Um, not for the cheapest one, for the one that looks like a reasonable build quality. And I know you can't always tell from the photos, um, but check the feedbacks out as well. Um, maybe even consider if you're going to get one of these, consider going to a Amiga kit because the quality of soldering on that is absolutely shocking. I could have I could have done a better job with that with my eyes shut in a you know sort of with my ears muffled in a dark room with a soldering iron with a you know half centimetre wide tip on it. Seriously. 
that is really, really bad. Uh, and they're very grayed as well. It's almost like they've been stored in the wrong humidity in a you know sort of damp uh, room for months and months and months. Uh, so anyway, it's got a bit of sticky tape down the back as well, Velcro to attach it. But yeah, that's for the second Amiga 1200 that I purchased recently. Um, there's nothing wrong with my main Amiga 1200. I, what I wanted was um, a faulty one for spares, and I picked up one on eBay. It was about 30 quid-ish, um, described as I mean, col some colour fault, and expected to be uh, needing to replace the um, DAC chip on there. But uh, shock horror, plugged it in, it works fine. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with me at all. And I've given the good PCB a really thorough going over. I've checked all the caps, checked everything. There's nothing wrong with the Amiga, so I purchased this really to stick it in there. And I've got a few spare compact flash cards. I get that up and running with a second part, you know, a hard disk just like my other Amiga. Um, and this was sort of an accidental purchase, really. It was only a quid. I didn't realise that at the time this would come with one. I thought it was just a little PCB, so that's a spare, I guess. Uh, almost getting to the end now. This is a bit of a horror. Scenario really for anybody uh, is into these retro systems from the electronics point of thing, you know, side of th things and wanting to restore and um, keep these things going. It's a shock really um, to see these like this. This is four Amiga 500s that uh, will never, you know, have died effectively. Someone's someone's killed them. Um, it's a sad, you know, sad, sad fact really that what happens with these Amigas is all of the chips are socketed on 500s except for you know the the, the DRAM and uh, the multiplexing or demuxing um, circuitry and I can't really show you on here but just a bit further up sort of uh, so around this if you move this out of the way somewhere if you, if you imagine the circuit board extending here you've got sort of your fat Agnes sort of here and then here you've got your four data path chips um, and typically it's data path failures. One of those four chips will go. I think it's a 274 LS4, 244s, and 274 LS245s. Um, or these DMUXs or the, the you know the DRAM. Um, it's you know the cheap, the really cheap, you can buy these DRAM chips a pound each maybe. Um, buy them in bulk, you maybe get this cheaper sort of 40 50p each. Uh, they are can be hard to get hold of, hence why I bought these boards. Um, and again, 7.4 LS chips and that, that 7.4, uh, it's not even good on this one, but on the um, 500 plus there's another one here, a DMUX uh, chip, I forget what, what number it is, it's like a 138 or something, 139, I can't remember. Um, but again, they're all really cheap and it's just a case of having the right patience and skills and things to desolder these, you know, re-socket them if you need to. And the DRAM is probably the last resort. First thing to do on, on the 500 when you've swapped all the chips out is to go through the, 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 the you know, the, the, as I mentioned, the data path ones, the 274 LS244s, the 2245s, and the uh, these two here, which I think, again, is that a 244? Yeah, 244, and that's a 244. So, cheap, you know, start with those, socket them up, see if that solves your problem. If it doesn't, then move on to your DRAM. And what we're talking about really typically, the area you get is it's the green screen. That's what you'll get with these, any of those chips fail, you get a green screen. Um, but it's really sad, sad for, for Amigas there, just literally carnage, you know, someone's like got, I don't know even how he's, how he's done that, he's got, not even been hacksawed, has it, it's just been physically broken, he's probably stuck on the bloody thing, um, which is, uh, it's just a tragedy, it really is. So I'll desolder these when I've got the time, I might even just put these away for now, I just can't be bothered with it, but no doubt that out of the, uh, how many have we got here, 48, um, 16, 30, uh, 64 is it? 16. Yeah, there's 16 on each of these, so 32, 64 chips. There's bound to be, uh, I would say, 50% at least of those that to function. I didn't really need these. I've probably got a good 60 or so of these in stock already. But um, having seen these going for about a pound each on eBay, um, I thought, I'm just, you know, it's a bit of an opportunity. I'll take this while I can, really, because DRAM is one of the main failure points on these 500s, and like I say, it kills them when it happens. Um, pretty sad. And then the final pickup I've got this morning is the Dreamcast keyboard. Yes, absolutely pointless um, purchase, really. Um, uh, again, it's just one of these being a bit anal, you know. I uh, want all the accessories, um, even if I can't use them. <laughs> so I've given this a clean up first thing, but as you can see, it's, uh, it's pretty mint, really. Uh, I tested it, it works. Um, you know, I guess you could say, well, what, you gonna, what would you use one of these for these days, really? Well, you know, some of the homebrew stuff out there, um, you, you, I think you can boot Linux and stuff on the, on the thing, so you could use it with that. 
you can run a browser on there I think um, you could you know use this with a browser and there are some um, some of the homebrew stuff is command line driven stuff um, I forget there was one I was playing around with the other day it was one of the um, scum emulators um, it's for something like Monkey Island I think it was and in order to do it you know you launch something and it brings up a command prompt uh, you know it gives you some sort of variable you can mess around with the commands and the command line there and you eventually you can get it working so it's I probably won't use this in fairness but it's uh, it's just a nice to have and it was pretty cheap it was, I think I got this for about 2.99 um, free postage um, which you know it must have cost that to post the bloody thing um, too good to turn down Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll um, do some more videos soon. Cheers, bye.